Hey, baby girl. Mother, what are you doing with this guy? He's my new husband, and don't criticize him. He's better looking than your dad. Shut up. I will never accept him as my father. You don't have to. Get out. What do you mean? I live here, too. <laughs> no, you don't. Get out. I don't want to see you anymore. My new husband is living here now. Hey, I'm Jordan. When I was growing up, I lived with my mom, Emily, and Frank in the countryside. It's a bit different from the usual stories because, in our house, I was the one who had to do all the chores, not my brothers. Our home was surrounded by green hills and endless meadows. Even though the scenery was nice, my childhood was filled with sweeping floors, washing dishes, and taking care of the farm animals. I was the one with all the work, while my brothers, Eric and Jared, got to enjoy themselves without lifting a finger. My mom felt they were not cut out for farm work. Not only did I have to do all the tasks, I didn't have much time for myself. My mom was also not very good at making me like myself. You dress like a boy, Jordan. That's because I have to carry and lift the soil and do all the work. No wonder no one wants to go out with you. You are plain looking too. When I was your age, I was so much more good looking. Maybe you can help me look better. What for? No one would be interested in you anyway. I hated my mother growing up. For years, she would also criticize my cleaning and she never stopped saying how much I was a terrible cook and would never make anyone a good wife. I felt terrible and many nights I ended up crying myself to sleep. By the time I turned 18 years old, I had enough and moved to a different town to go to a community college and become a teacher. I applied for a student loan so I was happy to get out of my family for a while. A few years later, I came back home to visit and learned that my dad was alone because my mom had run off with an old high school friend she found on Facebook. My dad was the total opposite of my mom. He was quiet, calm, and never liked getting into arguments. However, his flaw was that he never stood up for himself or for other people like me. My mom was the aggressive one in the family, and he always backed down and let her have her way. Still, dad agreed to divorce mom. My brothers were not at home, and both finished high school and decided to backpack around the world. While I was gone studying for my teaching degree, I learned that my mother had cleaned out my room and sold off some of my prized record collections, as well as autographed copies of some singers. I was angry, but couldn't do too much because my mother was not around. After the divorce, I continued to teach in the city, and Dad hired people to help look after the farm. He didn't feel confident that my brothers were around enough to work. One day when I went home, I heard a familiar voice. Hey, my little duckling. Hi, Mom. What are you doing here? Your father and I are back together, just so you know. Really? I thought you got married and lived in Europe. Donald? That bum. All he did was go to casinos and lays around the household. That idiot said he worked for the bank, but he was just a mail sorter. Well, I am happy you and Dad are back together again. Just so you know, next time you choose to drop in, call first. It's rude to drop in. But we are family. What, you bitch? You don't remember when you turned 18, you left and walked away, leaving us to feed the animals and milk the cows. Jared and Eric are not made for this type of work, only you. You left us with lots of work. Fine, see you. I left the house angry at my mom once again, but before I turned my back, I kissed my dad goodbye. He didn't respond much, and I suspected that at the age of 65, he may be having symptoms of dementia. I felt bad about leaving, but promised to stay in touch. For the next five years, I dropped in around Christmas time to visit with my dad, who was now confined to a wheelchair. My mother urged me to stay on to care for my dad because she wanted to go to Europe and travel with my brothers. I quit my teaching job to care for my dad. I also took care of the animals, and it was as though everything was back to when I was a child. It wasn't long before my dad passed away, leaving the house to my mother. She didn't attend the funeral because she said she hated to be depressed. She told me to write to her and tell her all about it. My brothers declined to attend as well. Finally, one day, my mother arrives with a man who is her age. He looks Greek and his name is Stephos. She takes me to another part of the house and tells me something shocking. Hey, baby girl. Mother, what are you doing with this guy? He's my new husband, and don't criticize him. He's better looking than your dad. Shut up. I will never accept him as my father. You don't have to. Get out. What do you mean? I live here too. <laughs> no, you don't. Get out. I don't want to see you anymore. My new husband is living here now. I was so surprised. 
I hurried to my room and packed a few things. I planned to go back to the city and look for a job as a teacher. Times were tough, but I managed to find a job as a trainer for a tech company. I eventually got training gigs in various countries, including Singapore and Germany. One day, when I was at my 12th floor office in downtown London, Eric, my brother, texted me with an important message. Baby sister, how are you doing? Not too bad. Going to hang out with friends at the newest Michelin star restaurant? How's everything? Terrible. Mom's been drinking a lot. She and her new husband, Stefos, are always fighting nightly. Sis, I need some money to get my car out of the ditch. Ask mother, where's your money? I don't have any. Mother never encouraged me to get a job. Jared and I finished high school and hoped to make money as an influencer on TikTok. But we partied too much and can't concentrate on the videos. You are the one with the skills. We don't even know how to work at a fast food restaurant. Not my problem. I showed you how to take care of the animals, but you and Jared never seemed interested, always caring about going on the next trip. All the money's gone, Jordan. My mother and her new husband made some bad investments. We are all going to lose our house and family farm. You gotta help us. No way. It was true. My other brother, Jared, also called me to explain that the family farm would be on the auction block. My mother and her new husband were kicked out and living in a tent in a park. Jared asked me to help buy back the farm for $100,000. I said I would think about it and hung up. Because I managed to make some wise investments, I made a few inquiries and talked to a lawyer to help me buy back the family farm. After a few calls, I was the successful bidder. As soon as I bought back the farm, I took a look at the books, and I figured that I could expand our current milk business and add other products like cheese, eggs, honey, and other items. I would focus on organic products. Fortunately, many of the big grocers took on my wholesale business and everything was booming. One day, while I was out making sure the animals were healthy, I received a visitor. My daughter, my only daughter, I need your help. What are you doing here? Can't you see that I am busy? Don't treat your only old mom like this. I just kicked my alcohol habit and got rid of Stefos. Let me come live with you and help you out. I have great business ideas. Get out of here. You're only my mom in blood only. You never treated me like a daughter and always insulted me. I don't care about you anymore. Crying? You know how many days and nights that I cried when you abused me when I was young and kicked me out of the house when I was older? I was not thinking. I loved you always. My mom spent the next 10 minutes pleading with me to take her back. But I turned a blind ear and I had to get a few of my farm helpers to kick her out of the property. A few weeks later, I got a text from Eric that him and his brother were in a Mexican jail because they were caught selling drugs to locals in Los Cabos. My mother was also in the female section of the prison. My family members were caught dealing drugs. Eric asked for my help, but I refused to help them with lawyers or provide them with any other consular assistance. I had enough with my family and refused to forgive them for my abusive childhood. Today my business is thriving, and I am dating a local farmer, Daniel, who cares about me. I don't communicate with my family anymore. What would you do? Do you think I am too harsh?